So I wanted to talk a little bit about this graphic that was posted in the Black Box Facebook uh, site uh, because it really nicely illustrates how iTerm is represented in the step response in PID Toolbox. So there, there's a common misunderstanding that, that iTerm is related to this offset, this general offset here. And in, in a lot of PID systems, that's probably the case. In our mini quads, that's not exactly the way it's represented. It's more represented by a sort of slow oscillation. This is, this is more of what I term does when it's too high relative to P. So let me just uh, describe what's going on here. So this person basically was varying PD gain. So you can see here that P and D are, are, uh, are increasing, but their ratio is remaining the same. So this is the way I generally uh, suggest that people do these tests because it's this kind of shortest route to getting the optimal tune. The other thing that's happening as you increase PD gain is the PI ratio changes. You see that? You can see that what's really happening here is as we increase P and D, so the PD ratio is, is the same, that slowly this peak is coming down because we're slowly closing the error gap by pushing more P gain into the system. Now, at some point, it, the differences are pretty small, and you can see that there's still this sort of carryover that's sort of it's sort of elongated. You notice that, right? Now, I think what what the person did was basically found what seemed like a pretty decent PD gain, and then started to play around with the uh, the PD balance. As you change the balance, this comes down, but you see that it's slowly actually as you increase D, it in fact starts to overshoot even more. So you can see the colors going from the darkest to the bluish, the sort of reddish colors to the blue. That's as you're increasing D. So what's happening is as you're increasing D, you're in fact slowing the response and that slowing is allow is causing I term to wind up a little more. And so that's why you're getting this slower overshoot. And so no matter how much you start adding D there, this is just going to get worse and worse, right? So what do you do? That probably the best solution at this point would have been to find a decent ratio. And then from that point, you would start either adding feed forward or decreasing I. I would probably opt for the adding feed forward. That makes a lot more sense. P, maybe P could come up too, you know, or, but um, but anyway, you can see I term. That's how it's represented. It's this slow kind of overshoot that you'll sometimes see. You, you, if you ever find yourself in a p place where you, you're like, I keep adding D and it just doesn't stop overshooting. Well, that's it. Uh, so yeah, so then somebody else found something similar. So this is how subtle this is. This is kind of interesting. So this was a, a second post by... Uh, somebody else in the in the uh, who also noticed this similar small you see, look at this little tiny overshoot there to, to be honest here this is really subtle and and i probably by all accounts i would just leave it okay but this person did an, a little test where they simply took took the eye gain down and took the eye gain down to 40 voila look at that it's gone right now I'm not I'm not recommending that you do this, but the point is I mean may, maybe maybe 60 or 70 would have been good on I term you know to, to get rid of that or maybe even just a little more I term relax. But nonetheless, um, it's quite remarkable that that little tiny overshoot there, yeah, it's related to I term. So just know that you can have overshoot due to P PD balance. You can also have overshoot slower, which is due to PI balance. Okay. Hope that's useful.